In Class 3A, Section 1 champion Cannon Falls went up to Hastings to take on Watertown Mayor in their quarterfinal game. First quarter, Cannon Falls took an early lead. Colton Otto hides the ball in the rollout, takes it all the way to the house. Cannon Falls converted the two-point try. They're up 8-0. Second quarter, same score. The Bombers add to their lead. This time, Otto hands it off to Preston Schoenfelder. Watertown Mayor couldn't find the football. That's a touchdown. Cannon Falls went for two. They're all of a sudden up 16 zip. Later in the quarter, the Royals get things going on offense. Albert Rundell drops back. It's a busted coverage. Gannon Lee takes it to the end zone. Bombers lead now 16 to 6. Still in the quarter, the Royals make it a one score game. Ian Burrell pounds it in from a yard away. Cannon Falls now up 16 13. After that, things go from bad to worse for the Bombers. Otto tries to throw across the formation, but it is picked off by Burrell. He's going to take this one near the goal line where they will punch it in soon after. Cannon Falls season is over. They lose to Watertown Mayor 34-30. to New London Spicer over Malacca. In the state class 3A quarterfinals, Fairmont and St. Croix Lutheran Academy battle for a semifinal bid. The Cardinals add to their lead 14 to 7 in the second quarter. Quarterback Brendan Schmidtke connects with David Makestad, who takes it all the way down to the two yard line. Running back Elijah Johnson punches it in on the very next play for Fairmont to go up 21 to 7. Later, Schmidtke rolls to the right and finds Makastad. Those two are heating up, and Makastad is in for another touchdown. Cardinals offense rolling going into the half. Third and long for the Cardinals in the third quarter, and Schmicki connects with Landon Meyer-Dirk for the long touchdown pass. There was no doubt in this one as the Cardinals dominate St. Croix Lutheran Academy, winning 49-7 to advance to the state semifinals. Fairmont has a date with Dilworth Glendon Felton next Saturday at U.S. Bank Stadium at 2 p.m. We're going to look at some of the 3A quarterfinals from earlier today as well. We head out to Mayo High School where the Chatfield Gophers went for their 24th win in a row when they took on Blue Earth Area. First quarter, the Gophers go to the air. Sam Backer goes up top. Drew O'Connor hauls it in. That's a touchdown. Chatfield up 6-0 early. Gopher quarterback Sam Backer is airing things out instead of running. He hits tight end Drew O'Connor for the 28-yard touchdown pass. Chatfield's up 6-0. And then on the point after, Chatfield looks like they're going to kick the extra point, but instead they go for two. Kicker Jacob Erickson finding Carter Daniels to make it 8-0. Chatfield head coach Jeff Johnson must have seen something on tape. Jacob Erickson finds Carter Daniels on the fake. Ghost up 8-0. But... BEA would try to respond. Ensuing possession, third and 30 for the Bucks. Ashton Lloyd goes deep. Jack Norman hauls it in to set up BEA inside the five. But Chatfield's defense stood tall. Fourth and goal, Lloyd's pass skips into the receiver. It's incomplete, one of two goal line stands for Chatfield in the half. They are still up. Backer hits Cole Johnson, who is going to make a phenomenal one-handed weeping catch. How about the hops on that? A 25-yard touchdown for Chatfield. They extend their lead to 14-0. 8-0. Second quarter, the Gophers make a play worthy of Sports Center top 10. Cole Johnson turns into Odell Beckham. That's a touchdown and the best catch you'll see all year. Chatfield is going back to the bank. They blow out Blue Earth 35 to 6. We threw up to me earlier in the game. I didn't come down with it. My coach told me to come back to it and then he gave me the signal that I was going to go deep and I had a feeling that this one was going to go for a touchdown and it's nice that our O-line gave our quarterback perfect protection and my quarterback put it in a place where I could go up and get it and I really just saw the ball, put my hand up and hoped for the best and it came down with it. Huskies have been untouchable up to this point, mainly because of the freshman under center, Roman Voss. First quarter, JCC aggressive on fourth and two. Seth Stay finds the seam for the first down. Later, Huskies draw the Lakers off sides, eventually setting up Gabriel Wolf for the goal line rushing touchdown. Wolf converts two, and JCC leads 8 0. Later in the first, ball pops loose. On the Lakers' third and one attempt, Huskies recover, and it'll turn into points. It's about time Wolf breaks loose. The senior running back evades the Lakers' defense all the way to Pater for his second TD of the night. 
to the third quarter we go. JCC in front, 14-0. Lakers attempt a fake punt. The pressure is on in senior Caleb Vancura intercepts the lob. And right after a rare passing play in the cold conditions, Voss hits Vancura and no one can take him down. JCC goes on to shut out the Lakers 27-0. It's a historic win for coach Tom Schuler, who picks up the 200th win of his career. Huskies face Barnesville inside the bank at 9 in the morning next Friday. JCC with a big win over Howard Lake Waverly. Barnesville beat Moose Lake Willow River. Also, the number one team, Chatfield over Blue Earth area, and Eden Valley Watkins knocked off Sox Center. Hoping to get that monkey off their back tonight at Brainerd, taking on the winners from Section 8, Manoam and Wabin. Didn't look good early on for Deer River. They fell behind 14-0 in the second quarter, but big play here. Thunderbirds punting, blocked. Curtis Thompson, get on it. Touchdown Warriors, they're trailing 14-6 at that point. Third quarter now, Deer River on the one-yard line. Ben Storley muscles his way for the score. 14-12, the Deer River Warriors fall or, or trailing at that point. And then with the snow coming down late in the third, Sam Ryder running his way in for six. Warriors go in front. Ryder would score again in the fourth. And the fourth time is the charm for Deer River. They get that monkey off their back, winning 26 to 14 over the Thunderbirds. Springfield against Kirkoven Murdoch Sunburg. We'll call him KMS tonight. Hunter Kalstrom for KMS. Check this out. 11 yards away. Check him out with the run. Right up the middle. Fight through contact. He's in there. 6 0. They missed the point after. Springfield eliminated Kirkhoven Murdoch Sunberg. Hunter Kallstrom, 11 yard TD run. KMS is up early. Springfield would come back. Watch this run after the catch by McCoy Crick. It's a 38 yard touchdown for Springfield. And guess what? McCoy Crick. He breaks out and there he goes down the sideline. And yeah, that man's gone. That's a 38 yard touchdown run. The score is 6 to 7. Springfield won this one 28 to 6. Six points. The Tigers get their answer on the next drive. Jacob Knockreiner connects with McCoy Crick, who dodges not one, but two defenders and takes it to the house for six. Tigers take the 7 to 6 lead in the first half. Toll on the receiving end on this play as he dodges one Fighting Saints defender and sends another flying out of bounds. The Tigers led 7-6 to six at halftime and scored 21 unanswered points in the second half as they advanced to the semifinals with a 28-6 win. Springfield will face Deer River at 9 a.m. next Saturday at U.S. Bank Stadium. Dylan O'Connor, a nine-yard touchdown run for Fillmore Central to put him up 6 to nothing. Lester Prairie down 12-0. Central had 12-0 uh, late in the first half. Rice and Corson on this end around. And nice move, and he's in the end zone. But here comes Lester Prairie right before halftime. Watch this. Tanner Schivel going to roll to his left. Throws one up high towards the end zone. Look at that. Ball tipped Ooh. right into the hands of Logan Lambrecht. Evil to Logan Lambrecht. It's a 30-yard touchdown. Watch the tip and then the catch for the TD. But it's not enough. Fillmore Central wins. 18-16. Close game, but here second half, they added to that lead. Dylan O'Connor's quarterback sneak. Hey, I got an idea. Grab that guy from behind and push him. He did. <laughs> Lester Prairie's rally comes up a little short. 18-16 over Lester Prairie. Also in 1A, it's Miniota over Breckenridge. The Spring Grove Lions wouldn't waste any time as they'd strike first with a touchdown pass here. Two-point conversion would be unsuccessful for the Lions, but Nothing to worry about. Spring Grove will quickly get the ball back and check out this play. That's junior quarterback Elijah Solomon that you're going to see punishing the Owls defender as he muscles his way for the touchdown. The crowd was hype on that. Hancock, though, would have opportunities, but they weren't able to convert on them. Spring Grove would be in full control of the game to keep their season alive, winning 40-22 to and advancing to the semifinals. They await the winner of Ogilvy and Fertile Beltrami. To Buffalo we go for some nine-man football playoff action between Red Rock Central and Wheaton Herman Norcross. The Falcons looking to score another upset win after beating Mountain Lake area in the section title game. Warriors on the move early as quarterback Marshall Tolfeson goes deep but is intercepted by Falcons safety Jaden Lang. Falcons go three and out, but a huge fumble by the punter turns into a Warriors recovery for a touchdown. 
WHN leads 8-0 in the first quarter. Tolson going deep on the Warriors' next possession to Clint Dieterman for another touchdown. The Warriors' offense led 31-0 at halftime and would score one more time in the second half to shut out Red Rock Central 37 to nothing. Fertile Beltrami 22-6 over Ogilvy and Mountain Iron Buell 42-28 over Kitson County Central.